What's up with it? Hey, how's it going? I'm going pretty good. You? I'm great. Great. A little tired, but I'm good. Me too. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, introduce yourself. Let people know who you are. Um, I'm Shaolin. I'm from the city. I'm a singer, songwriter, entertainer, a wife, a mom, a daughter, <laughs> granddaughter, <laughs> sister, aunt. Say so all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, before we, um, you know, dive into so many titles, you know, as you, as you just named, mm -hmm. we just start off with you first. Um, okay. What part of St. Louis did you come up in? Uh, the city. Okay. The city. I grew up in Baden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you describe Baden for someone who's never been there? Um, honestly, um, I only only stayed in the house. I wasn't allowed to go outside and do all of that. If I played outside and stuff, it'll be like at other people's houses. But it'll be it was fun growing up. It was a lot of action. You hear gunshots here and there, but it was cool. Yeah. Um. Was you was your parents strict? As you know, you just said you was in the house. Was your parents strict or was just? Um. I don't want to say strict, but very protective and. My mom just didn't play about a lot of stuff. I wasn't allowed to do a lot. You know, when it came to going to play everybody outside, when it comes to doing something, you know, it just depends on, you know, if she was like, we can do this, we can do that. I mean, I wasn't like, oh, you just got to stay in the room and like that. No. Yeah. But you ain't going around the streets. Gotcha. Yeah. And I know that you um, started off singing in the church. Yeah. So I would assume you kind of had like that structure coming up. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. started singing in church very young. I actually started singing when I was about two years old. Um, in child care, I was in child care, and they started me in my first plays and stuff. Then I started doing plays, doing little concerts, and, you know, I think one of the first things I did was, like, Tina Turner once I got a little older. And then I was singing in church since I was, like, six in a choir. Yeah, most singers I know they kind of start off their career, you know, each, yeah. you know, stepping into their field in church. Yeah. And what school did you go to? Okay, I went to you went high school, middle school. I just say high school. Okay. You can go down a whole list. <laughs> <laughs> high school, I went to Cardinal Ritter for three years. Okay. And then my senior year, I transferred to Hazelwood East. Okay. Um, did you move? Like, what was the reason I transferred? Um, track. <laughs> yeah. That's how I transferred. It was track. I um kind of dug into your background. I was assuming that's another passion of yours. I was. Yeah. 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 I was a junior Olympian. Um, I had been running since I was four. Uh, I became a junior Olympian starting at eight. Um, I ran almost everything from the one to two, uh, the four by four, four one high jump, eight hundred long jump, and then I became a hurdler full time. So yeah, it was everything. What made you stop? Stop running all together? Uh -huh. um, I solely made music my passion. I made it a career once I got to college. And I did like that first year. Like, I love track. Um, I had an invitation to go try out in the Olympic trials. But I had sat down and talked to my husband now, you know. Uh -huh. And we were just like, this is in college. I was like, Man, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm tired or whatever. And he was like, you sing all the time. You know, let's work on being an artist. And he kind of, like, pushed that. I was a little scared. Still am sometimes. But he kind of, like, pushed that. And then that's how we came up with who I am now. Because I wasn't Shaolin in the beginning. Gotcha. I was just me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we came up with who I am now. So. Yeah. Did you get, like, scholarships or anything, like, going into college? The yeah. College track? Okay. A lot of scholarships. Um, athletic and academic. I had some for basketball. And I'm not a baller. More, more so a shooter. I had some for basketball, volleyball, and track. Track, I had the most. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, like you said, once you got to college, I guess that's when you fully took on the, um, it was it just, was you still doing, like, the church music, or did you go straight into the R&B? Uh, when I got to college, I was still doing gospel. Okay. I was still doing gospel. I have been doing gospel my entire life. Like, a lot of times, most kids are able to, like, this was even elementary, middle, high most kids is able to like leave from practice, leave from games, and go straight home. Sometimes I had rehearsal, <laughs> so I had to go to church or whatever little group I was in, depending on what we were doing. 
I, I had to go to rehearsal. So I was doing everything. My work was good, grades was good, but I made sure, my mom made sure I made everything. So like, I mean, I never stopped doing gospel. I still sing now to this day. I'm in a, uh, an organization that I still sing in and then I'm a part of this convention. So still, that's I remember still I my roots. Yeah. <laughs> still. <laughs> I'm still committed, dedicated. So yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, I ask you this, with you, you know, coming up in the church atmosphere as a singer, starting off anyway, how was that transition to the R and B? Well you don't really do like the I'll do the typical. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started singing background for this artist named Anya. That's what kind of segue the more sexier stuff like that. At the time, he was playing for Anya. I started singing background for her, and it taught me a lot, you know, like the way she commanded the crowd and all that. And I'm like, hold on. Like, how can we turn this into something different? Because most of the songs is about just, like, family stuff or just everyday life things. And then we got a little more lovey-dovey, slightly sexual with, like, one or two records. It was nothing extra. But her, just the way that she moved, made me want to kind of do some stuff like that. So that's how I got into, that's how I started to transition into that era. I started doing covers, like, at little open mics and stuff like that. That's pretty much what started me getting into all of that. Gotcha. But he's the writer. My husband's the writer. So okay. like he like, well, no, you sound good on this. You sound good on that. And then we both have a church background. So it's just, it makes sense in some instances. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Always. Yeah, yeah. Why you stay away from like the sexualization in your music? Cause I don't, I don't want to be a sex symbol, even though women are perceived that way. Period. I don't want to give them that. Like that's what they want from a woman. Like majority of the audience. I'm not saying males. I'm just saying the audience. They expect the woman to come out and list or do this blah blah blah. But I just like I like to do what I like to do. Like I don't. I think I'm like rare. I don't really perform in heels. It's not happening. <laughs> it's gonna be tennis shoes all day but I just stay away from it it's just not me I'm not comfortable just being completely honest if I sing about love or something sexual or something like that it's gonna be something that I've done and a lot of times I don't think you want this stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> because I, we can't talk about nothing fake you don't want to hear my business but I mean it's ways to talk about it Without actually talking about it, which I got some records like that, and gotcha. it, it'll make you think whatever you want to think, but you still don't know what I'm talking about gotcha. in a sense or whatever. So I just, I just try to stay away from it for so many reasons. I'm still a gospel. I still do gospel, but I am a pop artist all day long. So that's just what it is. It's just the way that I present it. Because I have some songs that's a little sexy to it, but it's the way it's presented. People don't really take it that way. Uh -huh. Now, if I walked out in like some heels or something, they'd be like, "Okay, I get it." You know, or it depends on how the dancers or how we doing it when we performing it. So it just all it's all in the presentation of the song. So I kind of like I stir away from it, but at the same time it's there. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I know um, back in what 2015, 2016, you had your skeleton EP. Yep. I know. Yeah, that was my very first concert. Um, didn't yeah. know nothing about performing, cause performing in church and performing. On this side of things, it's totally different. Like, they big on, you got to give them a show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Church like, all right, sing, baby. And you can just stand there with your eyes closed and they going to clap for you. <laughs> Some churches, not all the time. Because church people, it's hard. Church. But Skeletons was dope. That was our first production. That was the first time. When I say our, because I'm like under JNR Music Group. So that was our first thing. I didn't know nothing about performing. All I knew is. I just want to be an artist, but I was scared. Uh, we did it at this place that is no longer here anymore. I forgot the name. The Lux. Uh, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, my they God. The name, it's the, it's yes, the it's the C or something. CBS, it's something. That's what it is. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the name of it. And we did it there, and we had a packed out place. No room, no standing room, no, no sitting room, nothing. My very first show. How was that feeling like you just your first show and it just sold out basically? <laughs> it was nerves because <laughs> it was just a lot of nerves. But at the same time, I was so excited. I was just like, I know that when I get better, this is going to get better. Yeah. And talk a little bit more about Skeleton. Um, track Ghost. The track Ghost, um, I'll say some lyrics. Where were you when I was starving for affection? 
So that is geared more towards the father figure. You know, it's just like when you needed somebody so bad in so many areas, it's like, I didn't have you. I didn't have you at all. So I made some dumb decisions not having you or I made decisions out of being angry with you. Um, a lot of times people say I'm there, but you wasn't there when I needed you. You know what I'm saying? Like showing up here and there, that's cool. But like kids, we don't understand it. Like we need you aside from buying shoes, clothes, showing up to birthday parties. Like it's more than that. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of made this dumb decisions based off of my anger towards my dad at the time. So that's where ghosts derive from. Yeah, and I, with you saying that, I would have never thought it was about like your father. You know, it sounds like more like a relationship based on right. Yeah, because that's why that's why I say like when we talk about stuff, uh -huh. it's more so we don't want to gear towards one audience. But that was our perspective in writing it. We just want to make it so everybody can connect on it. It could be about a loved one, uh, your boo thing, your mom, your dad, cause just anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, cause it's general. In a sense. Yeah. And like, it makes sense too, like with the concept of the EP, like you said, it's, what I get is like you letting your skeletons out, you being vulnerable to your um, fans, basically. Yeah, definitely. Trying to piece of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to that though, because I don't know, I can definitely relate to that, um, yeah. that um, topic, I guess, when it comes to the parents and the child yeah. and things like that, especially with the daughter and the father. Yeah, definitely. Um, were you able to, I guess, resolve those um, yeah. feelings with your father yeah we're fine okay. um we're, we're good actually <laughs> but it's just like it was important times where you was missing yeah. like i needed you there i didn't care about nobody else i needed you and you didn't show up so it was important like super important times for me gotcha. and but you know it's fine you know everybody's learning everybody's growing and you have to have grace you know because mm -hmm. you don't know what somebody else is going through. Yeah. But at this, I didn't understand it as a kid. And yeah. I, my whole perspective was, I ain't asked to be here. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I need you. What you doing? It's life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, back in 2000 and, what, 2020, you know, you were expected to release another EP. And uh, um, the single during that year was any. It was, any it was just a single. I didn't release the EP. Uh huh. It was just a single. I think the single was "Still Love Me." I think. I think maybe yep, so. I think that was. And this was all you were making these announcements pre-pandemic. Yep, pre-pandemic. Yeah. Did the pandemic kind of shape your decision of not making a later choice to release the EP? Yeah, along with a lot of other executive decision decisions, um, a lot of stuff was going on when the pandemic hit. My mind just, I don't know. I think I lost momentum. It was a different shift in the world. I yeah. just say that. That, yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I think a lot of people was yeah. um, greatly affected by that. Definitely. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You learned a lot. I say I learned a lot, though, during that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. A by lot myself. of people yeah, taught me some people. stuff. Yeah. And then about <laughs> myself. Because you don't have no choice but to spend a lot of time with yourself mm -hmm. when you can't go nowhere. What are you able to do? Like, I wasn't married at the time. I wasn't, I didn't have no kid, you know, so it's like, I was spending a lot of time with me, and some stuff was scary, like, oh, this what you be doing? Like, this is how you be <laughs> sis? Okay, cool. So, yeah. <laughs> no, for real, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> Got to know me a little more. During the pandemic, um, you know, when able to perform and things like that, how were you able to stay afloat with your music? I honestly wasn't doing nothing I was supposed to do with my music. I think I was just like posting a lot of my old music and then I eventually just went off the grid as far as that goes. So I wasn't doing nothing I was supposed to do, just being really honest. I was doing covers here and there, but then I just really lost momentum altogether. And that's why I'm now at the rebuilding stage because I just start, started going through life for me. I stopped putting music first, stopped putting everything and everybody first. And I just really started to dive into who I was and started doing things that made me happy. I mean, the result for everything wasn't good, but, you know, it was yeah, yeah. it was a learning experience sure. during the pandemic. Now, I know um, 
recently just did the show with um Mookie. Mookie yeah, Mookie Tolliver. Uh, mm -hmm. That was last last Saturday actually. Yep. Last Saturday. It was that your first performance? That was your first performance you did the um Corey Bush and then the national anthem. And then what before that before that I did Was it the Strange MB? No, Strings was last year. Gotcha, gotcha. Strings was last year because I was five months pregnant. It was around, it was the same how, date. How was that? <laughs> Never again. <laughs> if I ever got pregnant, I'm not doing I was like winded, mouth was dry, I couldn't breathe. Like women that perform pregnant, they are gods. Like you are the best. I don't know what to tell you. Did Beyonce do something like that before? Yes. <laughs> she's she done it. it too. Oh my God. With <laughs> all her kids. Like she's done it. Me, mm, it's not my thing. <laughs> Catch me next go round. I think that's why I was like, you know, I couldn't do it. At the yes. <laughs> but no, Strings was last year, same time. And then Mookie, let me see. It was Mookie, then let's go back. It was Corey. It was the National Anthem of Corey. They was flip-flop days. Yeah. And then before that, this guy named Terrence had a show that I did. Gotcha. So, yeah. <laughs> How that's, was it? That's what I did. How was it getting back into the shape of thing? Like you said, I believe you haven't performed since what 2019. Prior to that, it, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> My first performance, I was winded, tired. Um, anything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, the good thing is, I was I stayed on key. I stayed on key, and we had a cool show, but. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Dancer was amazing. Band was amazing. Single with singers was amazing. It's just it was a long, it was a rough day. Uh, my inners went out, and then I wasn't in shape. I was preparing for a show that I wasn't in shape for, and that I wasn't rehearsing like I should or anything. Because I'm like, okay, you can get back into it. Nah, I'm a different person. Unless you're just standing there, you know, just sitting there in place, then it may be fine just to jump right back in. But right. you dancing and Definitely. doing, all, especially yeah. singing and trying to dance, man, you definitely going to be winning. Yeah, and I've gained weight, so it's like, it's different. Like, my body don't feel the same. I'm trying to, like, learn this new body, get comfortable in this new body. Also, keeping a level head, because I guess everybody's saying this is postpartum time. So I'm trying to make sure I'm good on all areas or whatever but trying to get back into that performance woo it's hard <laughs> in what way did your daughter change you would you say she made me sweet sweeter she made me kind forgiveness was more easy um um i don't know i just the way i just look at life now my mom always told me you know you have a kid she's gonna change you she's gonna change you but the way I look at life now, like, nothing is that serious. Nothing matters that's negative. And I only want positivity around me. I only want what's best because I have a kid to raise in this wicked world. And it, I guess, I don't know why the meaning changed, but, I mean, I birthed a whole human. So, it's like, I have to protect her. Yeah, and I would say it probably changed because you have somebody who, depended on you yeah <laughs> i'm that's that'll be that's the reason for me for a lot right. of things you know right you don't want to leave them behind and have to depend on somebody else who not gonna do it the way you want exactly do it. <laughs> you're right exactly <laughs> <laughs> um did you see what diddy put there well diddy <laughs> um said that you no know, r&b is dead i seen it what are your thoughts on that i don't agree why not elaborate a little more it's so many dope r&b artists like that's out there her um ari lennox she's more soulful but they r&b um uh kenyon dixon usher is still performing tank is still performing um that's just to name a few there's a lot of artists avery wilson um it's not dead it's not dead people are just looking for raunchy stuff R and B is still out there. It's still it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Music is still great. People are just in this I gotta get this quick view on social media that you're not really listening. Because the music is out there. And these artists are putting on. Like and that was just to name a few. Jasmine Sullivan. How's R and B dead? You know what I'm saying? Like I think I think that was probably like not a good statement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna ask you this. Um 
like you just kind of just stated that like you know R and B is probably like in a sense being ignored because of the time we in right now. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Do you think here in the city that they show a lot of love to the R and B artists? No, nah, they don't show a lot of love to singers, unless you're famous. But it's like you gonna quit because of that. Yeah, we we're a city of for rappers. I say it all the time. This ain't no secret. <laughs> St. Louis is a city for rappers. Now they hear you and you can sing. They gonna love you, and that's just what it is. Now, just fully coming to support, no. But I can't say the St. Louis don't support singers and stuff like that. I, what I'll say is people support who they want, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just feel like whenever you do something, give them something to come to, because we have a a tough critical city. It's really tough here. Like, big big artists say it all the time, mainstream artists, they always say St. Louis is a hard city because we'll stand there and we'll look at you sadly. But if you gonna, if you want them to come, give them something to come to. That's the best way I can see it. It's crazy. Um, are you probably familiar with um, Lydia Caesar? Yeah. Yeah, she said the exact same thing. <laughs> she said, yeah. she came here, you know, she's from New York. <laughs> right. And when she came here, you know, no, she you knows she's talented artist, but she, yeah. when she thought she was gonna come in and kill us, like, uh uh-uh. uh, they're gonna look at you like, uh, like, what's next? You yeah. <laughs> know? <Like>, okay. <laughs> yeah, and she, she's dope. Like, yeah. Lydia's the whole package. Um, She's one of the people that gave me my first start as a artist. Like, when she was doing her shows, mm-hmm. I was on her bill. I did, I did like one of her first shows where we did the cypher and stuff. Like, like Lydia, her platform really changed my life. I can honestly say that she's like a mentor in the music game for me. I love her. So sweet. But she ain't lying. You would think because we're smaller than New York or we're smaller than LA that it's easy. It's easier there. It's harder here. Yeah. <laughs> it's it it's is. probably easier. Like they got more access to like the industry and stuff like Exactly. That. But, but it's more noticed. access for, for singers. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of stuff that's geared towards singers. And I mean singers that take it seriously. Like you want to be heard. I don't want to sing in a club. Where the, the sound is only good towards rapping over my song or singing over my song. No, I want a cool sound check where I can hear from all areas that's not ringing. Everything just makes sense musically. And it's not like that here. If you get some venues, they don't take you serious. And then the people don't take you serious. You got to make them. Mm-hmm. And how do you do that? You stay in their face. You keep the entertainment. Every time you do it, you go up and up and up. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what are some of your music inspirations? Or who, who are some of your music inspirations? Okay. It's a lot. So many people. Um, Dead. Definitely Whitney Houston. <laughs> Michael Jackson, as far as performance in certain ways, he does his BGBs. I just think he's dope. Uh, of course, Beyonce. She's like who I kind of pattern my shows and some music after. Mm-hmm. Um... I like her. I like Jasmine Sullivan, Brandy, uh, Tori Kelly. Um, it's a lot of people. Anita Baker. Um, a lot of um, like what soulful singers. Now. More so soulful. <laughs> Their tones. Um, I'm big on tonality. I'm big on the the raspiness. I'm big on registers, range. So yeah, it's it's a lot of artists. I don't have just one artist that I listen to. I'm listening to an artist right now called Haley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's Mouton or something like that. It's a Caucasian girl, and she's she's dope. So it's a lot of artists. Like it's a lot of artists that they really be having me like, okay, stand on your toes when it comes to this. You know, JoJo too. Mm-hmm. JoJo Kalani. Like JoJo I'm Siwa. Jojo, <laughs> Jojo, get out, Jojo, <laughs> Jojo, like she's dope, she's dope. If I could just name a few of females, but it's a lot. I have a long list like that I listen to every day that I study with. So yeah, gotcha. You know, we are you know somewhat. This year is kind of over with at this point. Yeah, at this point, definitely. But maybe you might have like a surprise coming up, or maybe like a surprise drop or something coming up. Yeah. Can you hint to it or you just gonna just throw it out there? So, uh, what I can say, because I don't know what song, but what I can say is I'm about to release a single and I'm coming back. Like, uh, I've been saying the comeback, the comeback, the comeback, been preparing for it, but I'm about to release a single. I don't know which song yet, but it's gonna get released within the next month or so. 
if not this month. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, this month is over. Yeah. So, <laughs> the next month or so. <laughs> um, but it's going to be big. It is. It's going to be big. It's going to do some things for me. And, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. And all I can say is next year, the top of the year, more like Marches, look for, I said Marches, I just made that up, (laughs) look for a huge concert, a huge concert. I'm throwing my own concert, nobody, just me, maybe an opener, but I'm doing my own thing. And I'm talking about like graphics, moving stages, all types of things. Like, so look for that. But I'm definitely about to drop a single. Um, are you going to release an album or anything? Sound like you say so you're working on it. Right? <laughs> I got I got enough songs for like ten albums. Oh wow! So it's Work. just like what makes sense, you know. So I'm gonna be preparing for like an EP, and then after the EP, maybe an album. Gotcha. So that probably makes sense with the show next year. Everything will probably drop, but I know it's the end of this year. Like you said, um, we're going to ride that single out as much as we can. Give you visuals, give you covers, but we're going to give you visuals to the sing- single and all stuff like that. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, back in 2022, you released where you started the um, Summertime Club. Oh, yeah, 2022? I said 22. 2020. 2020. Yeah. I did. I started my own uh, boutique, Summertime. It's geared towards, uh, it's for men, women, children, and all of the above. We sell all year round clothing as well as summer accessories and wear and all of that. Now it's technically on hold right now, but I'm about to open that back up as well. Like I said, everything is coming back bigger and better. Like when I had my baby, like I just needed a break. From everything, so yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, do you have any last words that you would like to share outside of that? Outside of Centerville? Outside of everything we just covered. Um, only thing I can say is get plugged in with me. That's all I can say because at this moment, it's about to be a life changing experience. Um, Things are already up. I ain't able to say too much, but they're about to go further. It's about to be a done deal. I'm not going to be just a St. Louis artist. I'm not going to be just a local artist. I'm going mainstream. So let's get involved. Start coming to these shows or whatever. If you want me on an interview, you know, do all of that. Follow me, support, uh, get the merch, everything. Because things are about to change for the better. Yeah. Let them know where they can follow you at. Okay. Shaolin on everything. S-H-A-I-L-Y-N-N underscore music on Instagram. Shaolin music on Facebook. Shaolin music on YouTube. Uh, and then just Shaolin, S-H-A-I-L-Y-N-N on all the, uh, the music platforms. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thank you.